Hello there everyone, Carol here again. Thank you for joining me again. I was looking through my computer, all the digital kits that I own, and I decided that it was time to use some of them rather than leaving them I'm there. going to show you how I made this project after I've shown you the flip through of this. So basically we open it up and it's not a journal that you can add loads of embellishments or anything to. Um, it's purely for writing in. So this is the front cover and I've put some lace on the front. I did add a bulb pin here with some charms on it. And then we'll go to the inside. And you've got some writing space here. And then there's a flip up here. If I pull it down a bit. So there's a flip up there so that you've got some writing space here. Some more writing space here. And there's a pocket there so that you can add things within the pocket now as i say it's not a journal for storing lots of bits and pieces of ephemera in or for highly decorating um it is for writing in because the way in which it's made won't stand the pressure of adding too much to it so with the next page again we've got the flip up and we've got the pocket again so you get the gist, don't you? There's a flip up and a pocket and lots of writing space. So there's the flip up and there's the pocket. But aren't these papers beautiful? So pretty. And especially if you want to do something along the lines of autumn, you know, it would just um, be ideal for that. And I think that's the last page. Yeah. So that's the front. And then that's the back. Okay, so I'll show you those close up. Let's get down to the materials that you're going to need. All I've used for this is uh, five greetings cards. So I've got packs and packs of greetings cards and envelopes. So there's uh, five of those and the measurement of these is five by seven. Obviously use what you have. Um, so you'll need to alter your printing sizes accordingly. But these are the ones that I use. So five five by seven greetings cards and the corresponding envelopes and there's six of them. If you do any more than that, then you'll find the bulk will put too much pressure on the spine of the journal. But you could do less if you wanted. So if you do less, then you would have four cards and five envelopes. So the first thing that we're going to do is put the envelopes together to actually form the journal. Now, I've actually done this before in a previous video, which was very popular. And again, I'll put the link in the description box down below um, if you haven't seen that. So we take our first envelope and have the flap on the right hand side. OK, just put that off to the side a second. The next envelope we're going to fold the flap back on itself. And what's going to happen is we're going to put glue along the edge of the flap, not across the bottom, not over the whole of the envelope, just around the corner, sort of where the sticky is, you know, the sticky that you lick. And then we're going to put this flap onto this one in this space here so we're basically we're replacing that so that would then sit on there and this edge of the envelope here lines up with the fold line of where that flap is so that will sit on top of there so let's put some glue on and you only want a thin line of glue you don't want masses um, and as I say, we're doing it as close to the edge as we possibly can. And then that will sit on top of there. And you need to make sure then that it all lines up around the three sides. Let's flip that back so that I can put some pressure on there. Make sure we're realigned. 
Okay, put that off to the side, get the next envelope ready. So again, we're going to pull that flap back on itself. And then we're going to put some glue along the outer edge of where that stick is. And then we're going to sit that on top. And make sure that everything's lined up. That's all my envelopes now in place. Now I just need to deal with this last flat bit. Now if we have a look at the side of the envelopes here, where they all meet, it forms almost like a little bit of a spine. And in fact, those have concertinaed out a little bit, but by the time they're finished, they'll be actually squidged together quite closely. So what I'm going to do is along this edge down here, I'm going to put some glue so it attaches to that spine area where all the envelopes meet and then I'm also going to put some glue around the edge of the flap and then I can push that edge up against the spine area of the envelopes and then flip that up and over and then I can push a little bit of a crease on that top edge there and then push the flap into position so I've now got a teeny tiny spine area it's only about what an eighth of an inch wide and this is why you don't want too many envelopes for your project because it just puts too much pressure on this last flap that we've just applied the next thing that I'm going to do is flip it over and then I'm going to actually cut the strip off the edge of the envelope here and I'm going to do that to each of them so I'm just cutting off a really thin strip so that it now opens up that envelope to make a pocket now one of the things that you need to just watch out for that you might want to deal with is that here, when we flip it over, where these, if I bring it up close, where the flaps were on the envelope itself, they're loose. So you may want to go through and just quickly stick those down, which is what I'm going to go and do, and cut off all of these edges. So I'll see you back here in a little bit. Just want to talk to you about the printing of the digital kit before we move on to the next step now this is one of the pages from out of the kit and i've just printed it off as you normally would so as you can see it's way too big to fit onto my envelopes so i need to reduce it in size and so what i've done and this will depend on your own printer settings so you know you'll need to know your printer settings and how to go about doing it i can't advise you on that so i've printed two on a page all right so it's taken up half the amount of space and that is now near enough with a little bit of trimming the right size to go onto my envelopes one of the other things that you just need to be careful of is this is printed as landscape so it's long ways on and when you look at the image on your computer you will see that it looks long ways on if you print it in portrait which is this way on it ends up being a lot smaller so it looks like that so if ever you print off a digital kit and you think oh god that's a lot smaller than i was expecting as has been commented on my Facebook group recently, it's probably because you've got your printer settings in portrait rather than landscape. So just look out for that when you actually go to print off a digital kit as to which way round it needs to be. So once you've worked out portrait, landscape, and all the rest of it, and being able to print two to a page, for this particular project it's then about how many you're going to need so because I'm using five cards and six envelopes I'm actually going to be printing off 
15 writing pages and five card fronts and one each for the front and the back cover. In the original version of this envelope journal that I made, I made my journal this way round. I also added on a front cover, all right, using cardstock. If you want to do that, then you can do. Um, I would suggest that you go and watch the video that I've linked down below to see how to go about adding the front cover. This one, I'm actually making this way round so that they flip up this way with the open pocket edges along the bottom here. Okay, so that's the way around that I'm going to have it. So I'm going to go away and cut away all of these um, pages to be able to stick onto my journal pages and then I'll come back and show you what I'm going to do. That's all my pages now cut out and ready to glue in position. Now, just a couple of things is that I printed these onto a white paper and I don't use um, ordinary photocopy paper. I have a really nice paper and again in the uh, description box down below there is an Amazon affiliate link where I show the paper that I use for this type of thing. Now because I printed it onto white parts of the edges along here look are white as well and also the edge of my paper is white. Now normally I would go and ink all of these up but I want to make something that's really quick and because I'm gluing them onto white envelopes I don't actually need to ink up the edges. The other thing you need to check as well because of your own printer settings you'll need to make sure that these have printed to the correct size to fit onto your envelopes so you may need to trim things down either width ways a little bit or height ways a little bit but also with this one because it's got a center point you need to make sure that if you're trimming it off from the width that you're trimming a little bit off the left hand side and a little bit off the right hand side to keep it equal so that this becomes central so Cut out one of the pages, see what size it needs to be and trim it down accordingly. Make a note of the size and then cut the rest of your pages to the correct size. The other thing that I want to just quickly tell you is two of the main glues that I use is the Collal glue and the Tombow Mono Liquid Multi Glue. Now in this instance I'm going to be using the Collal glue because it's so liquid you will it it will smudge out onto the page once you press it into position this is a much firmer glue and so it could have a tendency to leave ridges you could also spread the glue out with the spreader so that it's nice and flat so that you don't end up with any of those ridges at all so i don't want to cover the front one i want to cover these two here so I'm just going to put glue around the four sides. Obviously you can use whatever glue you've got. You know, don't feel that you've got to use these glues. I'm just showing you the ones that I'm using. And again, if you wanted to, you could just use your finger to spread out the glue a little bit. And especially as sometimes this glue comes out quite fast. And then that will then sit there and I need to make sure that my borders are even. Now they're envelopes so they're not always going to be cut perfectly. And then I'll do the same again. again I'm just going to spread that glue out with my finger a little just to try and get rid of those uh, ridges where the lines of the glue are and then that one will sit up there I'm going to attach all of my pages but the other thing that I'm going to do once the glue has dried is I'm going to pull this open and with my circle punch, I'm just going to put that inside of the envelope and just punch out 
a bit of a semicircle on that side and then when I come to glue my pages onto this one I'll do the same on this edge here okay so not on this one but on this one so I'll come back in a moment when I've glued all my pages in place the next thing that I want to add is the cards now one of the important things to remember is that the cards are smaller than the envelopes okay because they need to fit inside the envelope now you have a couple of choices here one is that you can just insert the card once it's decorated up and just leave it as it is all right and then you can pull the card out and then you've got one two three four sides to write on what i did on the other one was i inserted the card into the envelope and i didn't push it all the way down so i've left that's the edge of the envelope there and that's the the fold side of the card and then i placed some glue onto the back of the card just up the top here about an inch inch and a half worth and then opened up the envelope and pushed the card inside so that the card is now stuck to the envelope so that that now forms a flip now the reason why I did it was to prevent the card from falling out so if I show you one that isn't glued in place if I happen to tip this the wrong way up this could actually slip out of this pocket because that's the way around that my journal is going to be and because it's now glued in place instead it doesn't have a chance of falling out and it acts as a flip on the page and it also means that you've got some extra support on the pages that you're going to write on so it adds that little bit more interest now some of you might also ask why didn't I just cut off this excess card and just have this little tab piece here and glue that piece onto the back of the envelope? Well, if I did that, I would have formed a ridge here where the card would have been cut. So to prevent that, I've just inserted the whole card. So I would then add all of those cards inside of the envelopes. Okay. Next bit. So my journal's going this way round. That card's going to flip up. So I need to put an image on the front here and some more writing paper on the back side of the card. So the back side I've already pre-cut. So that that's going to glue on there. Now because the card is smaller than the envelope, I'm going to have to trim this down a little bit for it to fit on so I'm gonna to have to trim a little bit off each edge and I'm not just trimming it off one edge because otherwise I'll have a lovely border on this end and nothing on that end so I want it to be equal so I'm going to trim a little bit off each end and I'm also going to trim some off the top edge as well the same will go for the image that's going to go on the front of the card I've just cut it out as it was printed and again I need to cut it down to size so I'm gonna to have to trim a little tiny bit off the edge and a little bit off the top and bottom I've cut out the image to size to actually glue onto the front of the card flap and then the piece that I'm going to add on the inside of the cover is also cut to size but I'm going to add it as a cheeky pocket a cheeky secret pocket now if you're right handed I want to be able to access something on the right so it means that I'm going to glue around one, two, three sides to make it a pocket. If you're left handed then you'll need to glue around those three sides there and I'm using the Tombow glue because it's a slightly stronger glue than the Collal and so it means that as I'm inserting something into that pocket 
it should be strong enough to hold it so long as you don't really you know force it so that will then sit on the inside there and make sure that you don't go right up to the the crease of the card leave it a little bit of space to breathe And then I can add a cheeky little secret message inside that pocket there. I don't know why it's cheeky, but there you go. <laughs> okay, so I've done that now with all of my pieces. So they're all now done. Okay, so front and back cover. So the front piece I can just glue in place. I've cut it out, made sure that it fits, remembering that my envelope's bigger, so I need to make sure that that's going to fit on the front. So I can just glue that one in position. that glue about a little bit means I've got a bit more glue to pick off my fingers a bit later on look and then that will sit on there make sure that it's nice and even and then flip it over to the back now you have a choice Bearing in mind that we're opening it this way, you might want to put the back piece on that way around, okay? Or you might decide that you want to flip it over and put the image on that way around, okay? So you'll need to decide which way around you're going to put it. I'm gonna put it on upside down eh? But before I glue it in place, I'm going to attach my seam binding. Now, my fingers are now mucky because I've just inked up before I came back on to film this last bit. I inked up some seam binding and I used uh, Victorian velvet and old paper. Now, you need to be careful with using these two colours. Old paper has got green in it and so green and pink make brown. So you do need to be very careful when using those two colours. Now I'm going to need about a metre and a half. I'm just measuring it out. About a metre and a half. And then I'm going to cut that length into two. And I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. Cut that into two and then find the center which is about there so that will go on there if I just bring it round to the front I want it to tie up here so I need to make sure that I glue it in the right spot so I want it glued down there all right, so I'm going to put some Tombow glue on, put a line of that on there. Flatten out that edge. And glue that down. And I want it to be flat, not crinkly, like the rest of the ribbon. Or seam binding, I should say. And I'm going to put another thin layer on top of that glue that one on top I've then got my wide micro pore and I'm going to sit that on top as well and it just helps to flatten out the edges a bit it smooths them out and it's an extra bit of security as well and now I can glue that image then on top of there
and my bow closure will be there. And that all holds it together. Now the last thing that I want to do is I want to attach some lace. So I want to add a piece down there and it's just going to overhang the edge just a touch and I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue for this. I like using different types of glues for different types of reasons. So I use my Fabri-Tac for adding lace and fabric because it gives it a much better grip. So that will go there. And as I say, I'm just going to let it overhang the edge just a little bit. Now to finish off the back, can you see how that piece of lace is showing on the back edge there? So I'm going to do the same at the bottom here so that it overhangs the edge again. This is just purely personal preference. Cut the right size first, Carol. There we go. And again, it's just overhanging the edge a little. So that when I flip it around to the front, and you see how I've got the lace showing at the top. So it almost frames it a little bit. To add that extra little bit of something, I'm going to add a bulb pen just on the seam binding here. And I'm going to put a couple of beads on. Where's my all? There it is. And a charm. And another charm. And another bead. And I'm just going to pin it through the seam binding. And we've got that extra little bit of dangly there by the by. Now there's only a couple of other little things that I would actually do to this because as I say we don't want to fill it too full. It's quite chunky as it is and you don't want to put all that extra pressure on this spine area up here. But what I would probably do looking at this now is I would probably print this off and, and cut that image out there and just raise her up a little and maybe do the same with the butterfly and attach those on the top. Now for the inside... I've got, out of all the pages that I printed, this is what I've got left. So I could actually fold these in half to make almost like little notebooks. And then I could either insert that into my into my cheeky pocket in there or I can add it into there the envelope pocket so I would go through and add all of those now at the very end at the very back we've still got this envelope is cut open as well I don't want to add a card in the same way as I've done with these pieces here because that flap would fall onto the back. I could add the card so that the flap falls on the inside or I could just add some journaling cards in there. Um, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now and then whoever owns this can do with that pocket as they wish. So there we go, really pretty journals um, using up two digital kits that have been sat on my computer for ages 
Um, put them that way on so you can see them. There you go. So yeah, there were ephemera vintage garden um, kits that I used. Um, and some cards and envelopes. How easy is that? Hope you'll have a go at making one. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Click on that notification bell. And you might even want to share this video with any groups that you belong to. Thanks for joining me again. Hope to see you all again really soon. Bye for now.